Hey guys, it is the falliest of fall days out there today. So I think it is finally time to take on apple fritters. Apple fritters are one of my favorite orders to get in an old fashioned donut shop, but I've never actually tried making them myself. So I decided let's give it a go. I did a lot of research into figuring out how to make a fritter. And there are a lot of recipes out there on the internet, on YouTube, and there's a lot of different ways to make a fritter. So it was kind of like a choose your own adventure when it came down to trying to figure out this recipe. So I created a recipe, I've created it on paper and it looks good on paper, but I've never made it. So let's go ahead and see how this works. The first thing to consider are your apples. A lot of the recipes called for Granny Smith apples, which are on the tart side of an apple. And then some recipes called for more of a sweet tart apple, which is like a Macintosh or a Honeycrisp. I went with a sweet tart apple because that's the kind of apple I really like to eat and I want a little bit more sweetness versus tartness in the apple fritter. I have here three apples that I chopped into bite-sized pieces. The next thing with the apples that I had to consider is did I want to add the apples raw or did I want to add them cooked? Now, par cooking the apples also gives us the opportunity to add some extra flavor in. We are going to add some extra flavor in by creating a brown butter um, to cook the apples in and brown butter, allowing butter to get a little brown and toasty, gives it a very nutty, savory, caramelized flavor. Okay, so our butter is just starting to get brown and it's starting to smell a little nutty. And we're gonna go ahead and put our apples in now and reduce the temperature of the butter before it actually burns and not browns. Now we're gonna let these apples cook for just a couple of minutes until they start to get a little soft. And then we're gonna add a couple of more flavor enhancers to these apples. I decided to part cook these apples to get extra flavor in here, but also because I don't like apple desserts where the apples aren't fully cooked. Through. I don't really like a crunchy apple in my apple desserts. So this will help hopefully help us have a perfectly cooked apple after it's been fried. All right, now I'm going to add a tablespoon of brown sugar. And I chose brown sugar because I like the extra flavor, the little bit of molasses in the brown sugar um, gives to the dish or hopefully give us the dish because we actually don't know. Um, I'm also going to add a little bit of booze. Um, I thought maybe a little bit of Apple Jack would be good, so I'm gonna add an ounce in there to give um, a little bit of balance um, on the sweetness. We're just gonna squeeze half of a lemon into this mix. Okay, so we're just gonna let this um, cook a little bit longer until the liquid evaporates a little bit and it reduces um, most of the way. All right, so most of our syrup has been evaporated and this is a nice thick syrup we have going on here. So that was about two to three minutes and then maybe two minutes um, when the apples were just in with the butter. So I'm gonna turn this off the heat and this needs to cool totally before we add it to the batter. So while we're getting the batter together, I'm gonna to put this aside so it can cool down. So our next decision on our apple fritter choose your own adventure is if we wanted to go with a yeasted dough or with a quick dough, which is a dough more like pancake batter that uses chemical leavening to get a rise versus yeast. I decided I would just start with the quick batter and it's pretty easy to throw together. We first start with our dry ingredients and I have some all-purpose flour here. 
Into that, we're gonna add baking powder, which is our chemical leavener. Then we're going to add some spice. Now I have this apple pie spice here that has all of the key ingredients you would want for a spice mix like this. So I'm just going to use that. And as always, even sweets need a little bit of salt. So we're gonna add just a little bit of salt to this as well. And we're just gonna whisk this together. And there's our dry ingredients. So now we have our wet ingredients. And the next decision I had to make for this recipe was how to treat the eggs. Some of the recipes use just a whole egg, goes in with the wet and you whisk it all together. And a couple of recipes I saw out there actually whisked the egg yolk or the egg whites into stiff peaks to give a little bit more volume and fluffiness to the overall batter. So I decided I'd give that a shot because I thought it could help us get some really nice kind of fluffy, crispy texture to the fritter. So we're gonna build our wet ingredients and then I'm going to whisk our egg whites. So in the wet ingredients, we are going to add the egg yolks and we're gonna add that to some sugar, just some plain white granulated sugar. We're also going to add some butter and then we had another choice as far as liquids go. A lot of recipes used milk. Some recipes used apple juice or apple cider. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to make these as apple as possible and add in some apple juice. Now I tried to find cider and I couldn't believe that I actually could not find actual apple cider in the fall at my local grocery store this morning but apple juice I think will work just as well. And it's actually probably easier for anyone to get at any time. So you can make these all year round. So that's nice and mixed up. And we're going to go ahead and whip the egg whites. And I'm gonna do this by hand. I might regret it, but it's only two egg whites. So let's see how this goes. there. All right, so we have a nice medium, soft to medium peak, and I think that will be good for this recipe. A couple of things about this, I probably definitely should have pulled out the hand mixer. If I was going to do this by hand, I should have probably had a bigger bowl. And just one note that these were room temperature egg, or egg whites. Um, I took them out of the fridge a bit before we started making this recipe and that will help with making, or that will help with whipping the egg whites. So we have our egg whites. Now we just have to pull the batter together. So we're gonna go ahead and add our wet ingredients to the dry ingredients and just give this a nice stir. Now this is gonna be like pancake style. We wanna get most of the flour incorporated, but we don't wanna overdo it. So we're just gonna stir it until most of the big streaks of flour are gone. And that looks good. Now we're gonna add our apples in and these are cool. And there's a little bit of liquid in this pan, but not very much, so I think that's okay. Let's fold these apples in. And then we're gonna go ahead and fold our egg whites in. 
So usually when you're folding in egg whites to a batter, you take a little bit out to first incorporate, and you can make this a little bit more rough um, as far as the stirring goes, and that'll lighten up your batter a little bit. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm just gonna add these egg whites in here and just fold nicely until it is all incorporated. And we're really just looking for a pretty cohesive looking batter. And just being as gentle as possible with these egg whites that I just spent all that time whipping. And this is starting to look really good, although I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to look like, but it looks tasty from my point of view. Okay, so we're just gonna set this aside for a minute and we are going to get some oil heating up. I'm going to get my cast iron skillet out, put some oil in there and get that oil up to about 365 degrees to fry these. Okay, our oil is almost up to temperature. It's about 350 right now, and we're looking for about 365. If you don't have a cool laser thermometer like this, you could just use a candy thermometer to take the temperature of your oil. I have about two inches of oil in the skillets. So the next step is frying, which is the scariest part, I think. Um, I have my handy disher scoop, which if you're gonna do any baking, get these scoops because it makes portioning things so much easier. And we're just gonna drop these into our hot oil. Let me just check the temperature one more time. And this is just about at temperature, so we're gonna go ahead and drop them in. I'm actually gonna pat them down a little bit because um, I want more of a flatter shape. Some of the fritters I saw um, online recipes were a little bit more like round balls, but I think an apple fritter should be probably be like a little flat like a donut. Now we're not gonna put too many in here. We don't wanna bring our oil temperature down. We don't wanna crowd the pan. So we're gonna do these uh, in a batches. I think I'm gonna just start with three here. And we're going to be looking for a really golden brown color. And we're gonna flip them once. We're gonna flip them once while they're cooking. Um, and I have these cool cooking chopsticks that I'm gonna try to use. So hopefully that works. Um, and the recipes online, I'll set about two to three minutes per side. I think mostly I'm gonna go by color. Um, we probably want them, I think a fritter should be pretty dark um, in color, not too light. This first one looks like it's getting pretty dark. So we're gonna go ahead and flip that one. That one's still going. All right, this one looks pretty brown, pretty golden brown and delicious. So we're gonna take it out and let it dry on a rack that's over a sheet pan. So all the oil drips away from our fried food. I'm going to check this with a knife. It does seem like it's coming out clean. So that means it is probably cooked. And so I'm just gonna fry the rest of these fritters up and then we will get on to the glaze. Our fritters have been fried and they fried up beautifully. They look great. The last thing we wanna do is create our glaze. So a good apple fritter has a nice sweet glaze on top. So we are going to make our glaze out of powdered sugar. I'm gonna add a little bit of this chai spice. It smells so delicious and I thought it would give it a little bit of a unique flair to our apple fritters. Um, this is just a mix of a bunch of different spices that you would find in chai. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract.
And then finally our liquid. Now you could use milk, um, but I'm actually gonna use some more apple juice. Again, going with that apple-y flavor, trying to get as much apple flavor into these fritters as possible. Um, I'm just gonna pour a little bit in, maybe a couple of tablespoons. I'm gonna start stirring this up and seeing how much more it will need. This kind of glaze is never an exact science. You're kind of looking for a nice consistency that we can either dip or I'm actually gonna try brushing this glaze onto our fritters because I think that might make it easier to be consistent and maybe a little bit cleaner and neater. That's pretty nice. I'm just gonna add just a touch more apple juice. It's amazing how little liquid it takes to make a glaze with confectioner sugar. So that's a nice consistency. It's very drizzly and runny. Now we let these cool for a minute, but we don't wanna let them cool too far because we want some of this glaze to melt right in to our fritters. And I like a little bit of a heavy glaze, so that's what I'm going to do here. Um, you could drizzle it if you wanted, and like I said, you could dip. But I like how this is working out, actually. This is neat and clean and gets a lot of good coverage. And I'm going to glaze all of these. I'm gonna flip them, and I think I'm gonna do glaze on both sides, because I just feel like you can never have enough glaze on a donut like this and then we will get into tasting. All right, so there you have it. I glazed both sides of our fritters and they're done and we're gonna taste and Sean came to give these a taste with me. Um, so let's go with this one. Let's see if we can just. Looks good, they're very nice and shiny. They remind me of good apple fritters that I've had in the past. Good. All right. Cheers. What do you think? Really good. The outside's nice and crispy, and the apples have a nice texture, and they have a nice spice to them. So I like them. What do you think? I think they're good. I think cooking the apples a little bit beforehand really definitely made sure that the apples get totally cooked. They're nice and fluffy on the inside and crispy on the outside, and the glaze is really tasty. So I'd call this a success. What do you think? Thumbs up from me. All right. Got this Sean thumbs up approval. All right, guys, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe and that little bell button to be alerted when I launch new videos. Thanks so much for watching. Now go have some fun in the kitchen and make some fritters.